Hi, I'm Jonathan Herman here to tell you about an exciting new course that I'm developing in sports and entertainment philanthropy, which is based on more than 15 years of personal experience in the field and original content from friends and colleagues across the industry. This course features unique content that can't be found anywhere else and provides students with an interactive and intellectually enriching experience. So what is sports and entertainment philanthropy? It is the leveraging of sports, entertainment, and celebrity to achieve meaningful impact on important social issues and community causes. As a multi-billion dollar segment of sports and entertainment, it has also become an important aspect of society with growing expectations by fans and consumers worldwide. For leagues, teams, and entertainment companies, it is often part of their corporate social responsibility or cause marketing efforts, such as the NFL's support of breast cancer awareness or Capital One's sponsorship of charitable golf events to support societal challenges. For individual athletes and entertainers, their efforts may be part of their personal branding, ongoing philanthropy, or simply a way to give back to the world or the communities from which they came, like Bono's support of African debt relief and Shakira's school in her home country of Colombia. It is also Disney's wing at the Florida Hospital for Children in Orlando, and it is athletes from all sports coming together to support Black Lives Matter. And just like so many other aspects of today's society, the causes are sometimes controversial and polarizing. As a longtime practitioner, I've been engaged in all aspects of the field. As an advisor to athletes and entertainers, such as NFL veteran Eric Wright, Knicks legend Alan Houston, actress Eva Longoria, NBA Hall of Famer David Robinson, and perennial NBA All-Star Chris Paul. I've led nonprofit foundations and served on various boards of directors, and I've been recognized as a thought leader in the field, leading major initiatives and speaking at national conferences, such as the Inspirational Figures in Sports Philanthropy panel that was organized by All Sports United. Here's a clip. Jonathan, you've hosted many and been in charge of many philanthropic campaigns. Of the philanthropic campaigns that you've led, what are the common factors among them that seem to lead uh, to a particularly successful outcome? Yeah, thank you for that question, Alan. Um, I've been privileged to work with a number of athletes over time. Um, I was executive director for Alan Houston's foundation, who's an executive with the New York Knicks, uh, former NBA All-Star. Uh, worked with David Robinson, Eva Longoria, Chris Paul, and others uh, through an initiative partnered with Living Cities, uh, which is a collaboration of 20 of the largest foundations in the country. Uh, and have worked with other uh, athletes and entertainers along the way. Um, I think that what I've seen as far as what elements seem to be there uh, when we have success uh, is first of all a principal uh, who is really committed to the cause and mission first. Uh, the way that we approach these initiatives is through partnership, uh, working with the athlete, uh, with the resources and assets that are available to that individual, uh, corporate players, uh, sponsors who are willing to participate, and then community-based organizations. So I'm sure we've all experienced this in the room. All of us are practitioners uh, here in sports philanthropy. Uh, when an athlete or entertainer typically tries to do this on their own, tries to do it themselves, uh, staff up a foundation in their name and acquire all the resources and expertise uh, needed to be successful, uh, we typically see the impact uh, of those initiatives fall by the wayside. Um, for us, one of our best practices uh, that we've seen uh, across these experiences is to partner with a nonprofit organization who has particular expertise in that cause area and empower them to do the work on the ground. Uh, we don't recommend that the athlete or entertainer reinvent the wheel, but rather use uh, the most effective wheels uh, to their, to their uh, disposal. Uh, corporate partners, we see this growing interest in CSR and willingness of corporations to get involved. But we also have to make sure that those corporate partners are mission first. Of course, there's going to be sponsorship benefits that go uh, back to the corporation, uh, media impressions, other things that they're looking for as part of their cause marketing initiative. Uh, but if, when we have a corporate partner who really believes in the mission uh, and is willing to leverage their own resources, not just money, but perhaps staff and expertise as well, we see those initiatives uh, be successful. 
Um, those are, I guess, a, a, a few of the components uh, that we've found over time. Um, but it really comes down to the commitment, the buy-in, uh, that each of the parties who are represented in that philanthropic partnership uh, extend and, and are willing to execute on behalf of the initiative. I have also taught business as an adjunct professor at Baruch College in New York City and co-founded a business education program with Alan Houston in New York and New Orleans. Over the years, I've also assembled original content from individual philanthropists and expert colleagues that will be incorporated into this course. These interviews provide important context and reveal a wide range of real-world considerations for effective sports and entertainment philanthropy. Here's a look. My greatest joy in life is my philanthropy. My biggest stress in life is my philanthropy because I care so deeply about it because I want to, to make sure I don't let anybody down. Growing up with a sister who has special needs made us a very selfless family. And I was born into uh, organizations like Special Olympics and MHMR. So I've kind of uh, uh, always been surrounded by people who are constantly giving back or constantly helping or, or constantly lending a hand. Eva's Heroes was created by uh, our executive director, Christiane Perkins Garcia and I. She was a special education teacher. And after school, she had many uh, parents always telling her there was an intense need for an after school program. Growing up in a community like Corpus Christi, we had amazing programs. And because of these programs, my sister was able to constantly have her mind and her brain stimulated. And the more that you stimulate these children's minds, the, the more they continue to develop. The minute that you stop, the minute that they go home, the minute that they um, are not stimulated in a way that they can grow and, and learn and interact with their peers, uh, they immediately begin to regress. These children have a, a very specific need um, where Eva's Heroes identified that and we created this program. It's kind of evolved into this amazing um, program of having activities uh, on the weekends, having activities, uh, dance clinics, we have art clinics, we have bowling league, we have dances. Um, we try to provide an environment where they can continue to, to interact and grow. A lot of people don't realize there's a really big difference between doing day-to-day -day charity and, and to becoming a philanthropist. Philanthropy to me is um, an overall bigger picture, bigger problem. Why doesn't this child have access to the medicine? Why doesn't this uh, charity have um, access to supplies? And as opposed to year to year and just making, making their annual budgets, I think a philanthropist will help over a long-term process. Let's take a look at the course outline. Its objective is to understand the growing relevance of this field as an important component of sports and entertainment, and the meaningful place that it has taken in American society and around the world. Students will gain exposure to the social causes typically undertaken and the underlying power dynamics that often define its practice. Key learnings include the basic principles of the field, the role of corporate and individual participants, and a deep dive into the practical considerations for successful campaigns utilizing interactive practice. Weeks one through six will really be about institutions, corporations, and individuals, the interwoven power structures and the role of philanthropy and community outreach. 
We will also cover corporate social responsibility and cause marketing, charity versus strategic philanthropy, which is a real difference, and public relations versus sustainable social impact. During weeks seven through 11, we'll cover causes, communities, and fans. We'll look at some of the typical social causes that are chosen and the risk reward determinations that practitioners must make in selecting which social cause to support, community needs versus corporate and celebrity interests, social media, fan engagement, and crowdfunding, and we'll also talk about the triangular model that I developed for effective philanthropic impact, which I presented at UCLA. Lastly, in the last three weeks of the course, uh, we will have a practicum where we will have a mock community engagement campaign that involves pro sports teams, all-star players, and corporate sponsors. There will be three written exams, which covers each one of these sections shown above. Thanks for taking the time to review this unique and in-depth course. I hope that you're as excited as I am to get started.